So what if there were no hospitals? It's a provocative question, and if you think about it, what would happen to our society if we didn't have hospitals? You've heard politicians say recently that if the hospitals are overloaded, if they exceed their capacity, the economy would shut down. So it made me think about how did hospitals begin and what was their function early on? If you go back to antiquity, you found out that hospitals were often created by religious organizations and they were put in place to take care of the sick, the poor, feed them. Sometimes they would take care of soldiers that came back from war, injured. But for the most part, hospitals were created for places for people to die. And if you look at how hospitals have evolved over the years, uh, since antiquity, till about the 18th century in Europe, um, they didn't change much. But then that was about the time the shift occurred where they went from more of a practice of art to a practice of science. And they would go back and forth again where religion would dominate, hospitals for a while, and then science would dominate. And if you fast forward to present day, we now have teaching hospitals that are part of very complex academic health centers. And these hospitals now are places where we teach medical students, nursing students, allied health professionals. We do research. All kinds of great things are discovered. And we also take care of patients. They're a complex institution with lots of regulations, lots of complex reimbursement structures, and they probably would not exist in their present state if those regulations and those accreditation requirements didn't exist. So what is a modern day hospital like? Well, it's like a factory. There are people that pay attention to supply chains. There are people that pay attention to finance. There's massive information technology infrastructure. There's environmental services. There's waste management. Besides nurses, doctors, all kinds of therapists, people being taught, people doing research. It's really, really a complex system. And a little bit different than things like the aviation industry or the nuclear reactor industry, where they have to be high reliability organizations, very little tolerance for failure. Hospitals have been called out in past years for creating errors, for being unsafe, for being places that people had to go to, but certainly didn't want to go to. And so I challenge the model of the present day hospital. And so what's the problem? What are the major problems with a modern day hospital? Well, I think in the midst of this pandemic, we've now had our warts exposed. We've seen that <coughs> hospitals struggle with their supply chain. We ran out of protective equipment. We ran out of ventilators. We didn't have adequate staff. We had some real, real significant issues. Capacity, as I mentioned earlier, was a real problem. If the hospitals get overwhelmed, the economy is going to be shut down. We've been shutting down hospitals because we've been told we had too many hospital beds for the past few decades. And now all of a sudden, we don't have enough hospital beds. So hospitals across the United States were asked, increase your capacity by 50%. What other industry could flip a switch and increase their capacity by 50%? So we, we could create space, we could find beds, but where do you get the staff? Because at the end of the day, people are taken care of by people. So our strategy failed us. And if your strategy fails you, you shouldn't repeat the same methodology. You have to start thinking differently. You have to start thinking, what will the next generation hospital be? And will we need hospitals in their present form. 
What COVID-19 did to us is it exposed the fact that technology might be something that could really help us create the next generation hospital. So what did we learn? We learned that we had to have touchless surfaces. We had to identify people with certain technologies. We couldn't allow visitors to visit people with COVID in their hospital beds. So we started to use iPads and our iPhones to communicate with loved ones as the only way to say goodbye. Some people had to die alone, and if we didn't have the technology, they would have not been able to communicate with their loved ones. We learned how to trace people's hand washing with technology to make sure that they were doing what they were supposed to do. We could trace exposures. If somebody had COVID-19, we could trace who they were exposed to. So technology really helped us, and I think technology will continue to be that bridge into the future. But innovation is messy. People are reluctant to change. People fear change often because they tend to cling to the status quo. They like what's familiar. But I think what COVID-19 did is it forced us to accelerate the adoption of technology. I consider technology the connective tissue of the hospital. You know, maybe one day we'll have drive-through brain surgery, but that's probably in the future. But we do have drive-through COVID testing right now, and we do have drive-through vaccinations. We also have very sophisticated information technology with analytics. And we also are bringing point-of-care testing to the bedside. So what will the hospital of the future be? We'll always need hospitals, but they're gonna be very different. The hospital of the future will have different technologies to make the room quieter. It's been described sometimes in the ICU that it's like a casino. There's so many bells and whistles going off. It's not a very restful place. Patients will be able to control the lighting and the temperature in their own room. They'll be able to look out the window and see nature, which has been proven to accelerate healing. I also think that hospitals will be like air traffic control towers, with experts in the hospital overlooking a continuum of care that goes beyond the walls of the hospital. Hospitals will look at different modes of transportation, just like Amazon and Google are looking to use drones. Hospitals will use drones to transport specimens between laboratories and between hospitals and to reach out to rural clinics to pick up specimens and potentially even paperwork. So the hospital of the future will be much different than the hospital of today. And the hospital of the future is going to have to understand what are the future threats. We're likely to have more infections. We're likely to have mass, mass casualties. And they have to be able to flex up and reduce back during normal operations. So we're going to have to design our hospitals differently. And they're very expensive to design. And they're very expensive to change. So they have to be well thought through before they're constructed. Will there be hospitals without beds? There are hospitals now that are being built without beds. There are hospitals that are being built with a small number of beds. The objective is not to be in a hospital, but to be in your own healing environment with the expertise distributed outside of the walls of the hospital. Maybe we're going to have futuristic diagnostic sick bays. Because if you think about it, there are very few businesses that diagnose a problem and then fix the problem all in the same business. That's somewhat unique in hospitals. In, 
and innovation in business, that doesn't always work well. So you have to define the problem quite clearly so you don't throw multiple therapeutics at the problem and hoping you catch the right solution. So you need to define the problem with things like molecular diagnostics, artificial intelligence, machine learning. All of that stuff will help refine the definition of the problem so the therapeutic can be more precision-like. And the word hospital is much related to the word hospitality. And so we don't want our hospitals to be dark and drab and gray and unpleasant. When you do ultimately have to come to the hospital, you want it to be a pleasant experience. You want it to be a first-rate, five-star looking hotel with all of the therapeutics and diagnostics within. The other responsibility we have with the Futuristic Hospital is to make it sustainable. We have to integrate green technologies. We have to reduce the waste. We have to reuse and we have to recycle. Hospitals generate a disproportionate amount of waste. We use too much plastic. We use too much paper. We use too much energy. And we have to adopt new technologies to reduce that, to make it sustainable for the environment and sustainable for the cost of health care. And so when I think of a hospital of the future, I think that it will continue to exist, but it will not be restricted by its walls. That outside of its walls is where it can do the most good, provide the greatest help as we decentralize the expertise and get it out to places where patients exist, where they want to exist. That's what the hospital of the future should be. And so it might end up being in your own home. So you may come to the hospital for some care, but then you'll be equipped with some vital signs monitors that you can put on your watch or your finger or on your ear or a sensor that's on your tooth. There's a number of different biometric technologies that could be put on you and you could ultimately be cared for in your home. Because when you see somebody coming to a hospital and they're restricted from being with the people they love at the end of their life, it's a tragedy to see somebody die alone. And if we extend our expertise outside the walls, I don't think we'll have people dying alone. Thank you. <laughs>